presentation contains current opinions of Moe Sansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor, and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice. We make no assurance that Moe's opinions or illustrations will accurately predict future prices or financial markets. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance. A detailed disclosure can be found at the end of the presentation. And now here's Mo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Compact YouTube update for July 29th, 2024. I'm Mo Ansari, President of Compaq Asset Management and the Chief Investment Officer here. First of all, again reminding you, please subscribe to this channel so whenever I put out a YouTube update, you will be notified that we have done a YouTube update. You can come and watch it. Or when I put out a podcast, which is on a weekly basis, Javed and I do that, much more longer version of this. No charts, but we talk about everything, what happened last week, what to expect this week. You can get all of this information. All of it is free. All you have to do is go to compact.com forward slash media. Right at the bottom on the left-hand side, you can just go to compact.com forward slash media. Just go to that, subscribe to it, and you'll get all of this information. Looking at the markets, last week S&P down a little bit, down 0.82, but the Russell continues to move forward up 3.47% uh, uh, last week. Just remember, just at the beginning of this quarter, it was up 3%. You know, it was up nothing. For the quarter, it was up 2% or less. And here we are up, we've gained 10% nearly this month, and we're up 12.34% now, catching up with the S&P. I think that as interest rates come down, small companies benefit from it. There's the expectation uh, Fed is going to announce that they're not going to cut interest rates this time around at this meeting that starts tomorrow, goes through Wednesday. Wednesday, they're going to announce, but at the press conference that Powell has after the meeting, we'll get an idea. Does he lay the groundwork for a September interest rate cut? Now, the market is expecting an interest rate cut in September. So he's got to just come and confirm that they are going to do that. If he doesn't, and he says, well, we're thinking, we're not quite sure, then the market might pull back. We'll have to wait and see how the market reacts. But the rotation continues to go. It's coming out of the large cap technology. People are taking profits and money is coming out of here and it is going into here, the Russell 2000 small cap index. I'll look at the chart in a second. I think we get a little bit more pullback here. If you do, I'll give you a level that I think is a good opportunity to get there. Utilities was the best sector last week in the market. Technology, communication services and technology were the two worst sectors last week. That's what we saw in the market. So the rotation continues. It's a small cap summer is what everybody is calling it. Oil continues to come down. People unwind the trade that they had. We're expecting a big boost uh, with the uh, Trump presidency. But now that the numbers are getting closer between Trump and uh, Harris now, uh, people are unwinding that trade a little bit, and that's putting a little bit of pressure on the energy sector. Interest rates down from 4.25. They went to 4.20 for the 10-year Treasury, which is not up, not down, sort of staying. It's down to 4.17 today. So we're still sort of in the bottom of the range here. And it's 4.10, 4.10, sort of the bottom. 4.4, 4.3 is the top. As long as we stay in that range, we're okay. Historical boom, so many of you have called me up and said, Mo, is this uh, AI bubble similar to tech, uh, the, uh, the technology bubble that we saw with the dot-com bubble right here, 1992 to 2003? Uh, it's not quite the same. We've seen these sort of manias, or we saw the railway, 1842 to 1848, markets went up, uh, then those stocks came all the way back down to just about where they started. Same thing with dot-com, started in 92, went all the way up, 400% up move, then back down in 2003. Shale revolution, we saw shale oil go up dramatically, about 200% move, and in 2016 it came back down, about three quarters of what it had gained. And now we're seeing the AI euphoria, it went up from 2020 to where we are now, up nearly 417%. I think we come back, maybe. I don't think we come back all the way down, I think this is not a new technology. It's not a revolution. It's an evolution. We, Javed and I talked about this on the podcast in a lot more detail today, but it's more evolutionary, not revolutionary. It's not like it didn't exist, like internet was not there before 92 or 80, in the 80s. Uh, the railways were not there before 1842. 
shale it was a new technology that came in it did not exist uh, AI, did it exist? Well, it's sort of right now an add-on. People, Microsoft and Apple and Google are all adding it on to their, it's a bolt-on technology to enhance what they already have. That's what it is. So it's evolutionary, not revolutionary. That's the way I would put it. And so I think we've gone up a lot in tech. I think it's time to prune and plant a little bit. But again, if you want more detail on, on this historical boom and bust cycle, tune into the podcast. This week, we have a lot of news coming out. The Fed meeting, obviously, tomorrow and on Wednesday. We get Wednesday the announcement on what the Fed did at the meeting. They don't expect to change interest rates, but there's like a 96% probability built into the market that they are going to cut rates in September. Are they going to do that? Well, they have to sort of lay the groundwork, and they have to do it uh, on Wednesday when Powell comes out, does the press conference that, yes, we are seeing. What is going to move it? I think it's going to be the unemployment data that we get. Uh, and the unemployment data is expected to be 175,000 jobs created. And that is a slowdown. We were 300 plus. Then we were down to 275. Last month, we were 206. If we get below 200, that will sort of say, hey, they, the unemployment number is really slowing down. And the Fed has two mandates, keeping... Uh, in, inflation low and unemployment low. If unemployment is starting to go up or jobs are not being created as fast, the Fed needs to sort of ease off the brake pedal, and that's what they can do by bringing rates down a little bit in September, and we'll see that announcement on Wednesday. Looking at the technicals, we made the fifth wave high on the S&P. After we make five waves, we go through what is called an ABC correction, like here, ABC, ABC, A. B, C, after we made the fifth wave. So we sort of go sideways. That's what we do. We did that uh, last year, June through no October, November. Here we are again. We've made a fifth wave top. I think we're going to go through this similar cycle. We might get A to the downside, B back up, and C back down going into the fall. September or October is when we make the low. I think that's where we go, back and forth. It came down to the 50-day right here, broke below it. Today, we are back above the 50-day, which is at 54.39, and resistance around 5,500. Today, we are about 54.75 or so, but just going back and forth, back and forth. That's what we expect. How much can we do go on the downside? Well, 53.22 is the 20-week moving average. If we break below that, I think, again, right around here is good support, which is 5,200. And if you get below that, then we have the April low, uh, which is 49 and change. I don't think we come down all the way down to 49 and change. I think somewhere between here and here, this is the best case, this is the worst case. Somewhere in between here, right around here is where we make a bottom, September and October. And that's going to be the buying opportunity. I think it's going to be small caps. That's what you should pick up as interest rates come down a little bit. NASDAQ. It's on third wave high, fourth wave pullback, and then we go back to the fifth wave high. That could be later on, depending on maybe we might have already made a fifth wave. Support 17,000, came and tested it last week. Today we're at about 17.4. I think somewhere around here, 17, just maybe a little bit below that, uh, is good support right there. And that's what we should hold. If you break that, then we could go lower quite a bit. That's what I would be looking at. 10-year interest rates, as long as we're below 4.33, which is the 200-day moving average on the 10-year yield, I think we're okay. Support is uh, right here, which is around 4, 4, 4, 15. We're there today. Got uh, to 4.17 today or 1.8 today. Um, just back and forth in this range, not going anywhere. As long as we stay below 4.33, we're okay. Crude oil down today Start after we made those highs. Uh, support is right around here, which is 72. We're about 76 today in oil. Again, just uh, after we went up a lot, came back down. Small caps is interesting. Target is right here, which is 245 on the upside. And we are 222. We get a pullback down to the breakout level, which is about here, uh, 210. I think anywhere between 215 to 220 is a good opportunity to pick this up. We're 222 today, so a little bit more. If you get it, just put some orders in. If you want to add small cap, that is not 
interest rates com- continue to come down, small caps will continue to benefit from that. Gold uh, hit that 2480 area, which was the target that I had. That was the projection from this to here. We hit that high. We pulled back a little bit. We made a fifth wave top. A, B, C after that. A, B back up and C back down. Uh, support is at right around uh, 2375 or so. And this is 2395, 2375 is support, and that's where we are. Those are my thoughts. Those are my views. Again, if you'd like to get more information on what we do, how we do it, you need help with your portfolio, there's no cost or obligation, send us an email at investatcompact.com, investatcompact.com, or just give us a call at 800-388-9700. Do it the old-fashioned way. Pick up the phone, call us, or send us an email at invest at compact.com. Those are my thoughts. Again, a much more detailed analysis of the markets and thoughts on the podcast, so make sure you subscribe to that. It's already out there, and we'll be more than happy to send you all of that information. I will be back with you next week. Until then, good trading. This presentation contains the current views and opinions of Moise Ansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. The views expressed are current only as of the date of this presentation and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice and nothing is personalized to any investor's individual circumstances. Compact Asset Management offers investment advice only after entering into an investment advisory agreement and gathering client-specific information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance.